something um, David or Ke who I think David's hosting can make you a co-host. Yep. Um, uh, I don't have a slideshow or anything. I just have some papers I'll be holding up. I'm going old school. Cool. And as, as a brief introduction, Lauren is just an amazing fountain of knowledge of herbal medicine and care. And she leads woman circles in my community and her, her, her heart and gifts of being a um, wise, attentive steward of, of life and time has been a blessing to me. And I'm so grateful that she's gonna share some of, her, some of herself with us today. That's it. Oh, thank you, Shaylee. Um, wow, I just got on in the last few minutes of that talk and I wish I had been on earlier. That sounded really, really rich. And um, uh, I guess first I wanna say thank you to um, the, you guys, to the organization for inviting me. I just feel really honored to be here speaking with all of you. Um, and sharing, you know, what little I know. I hope that I can, you know, give something, give you something new. Um, and also, Shaylee, I want to thank you for inviting me, and also just for your sisterhood and for your service and for everything you do for our community out here. And um, just want to say that you're a great inspiration to me on how to just live with goodness and in life, and to serve, to serve in a way that is in integrity. So thank you for all you do and are, and. Thanks for helping to midwife this conference and for inviting me to be here. I'm super honored. Um, I also want to give a thank you uh, out to uh, the land that I live on. The land that I live on is traditional Sklalem land, and it is currently called um, uh, Blue Mountain. I live at the base of what's currently called Blue Mountain in, on what's currently called the Olympic Peninsula. And um, I want to give a shout out to Blue Mountain and to the land that I live on for really the teachings that I'm going to be sharing with you today. I've lived out here for uh, two years now and really feel like I've just been in a kind of kick butt apprenticeship on how to how to dream with the land. And um, and I really thank the land um, for for the teachings that are really continuing to unfold and hope that I can do well by the teachings I've been given. I also want to thank my ancestors um, that hail from the Celtic British Isles, as well as the rest of um, other areas in Western Europe, and um, as well as Northeastern and what's now called the United States. And I want to thank all my teachers, but most especially my two teachers in, who are human teachers on dreaming. The first is a fella named Jeremy Taylor, who is now in the spirit world on the other side, but he was really an elder in the Western dreaming um, tradition that is still alive and well today and I had the chance to mentor with him and study with him um, for the last couple of years before he transitioned so I want to thank him um, and I also want to thank my um, my shamanic teacher and friend and spiritual grandmother a uh, beautiful little dancing crow she's a Lakota medicine woman who also goes by Dr. Deborah Francis and I owe a lot of um, the um, my dreaming verbiage and wordage and, um, and knowledge to her as well. Um, and then I also want to honor my family, my daughter and my husband and my baby inside my belly and my two dogs and thank them for letting me come and take this time to talk to you guys. So uh, a little bit about me. I'm not a permaculturist at all. Um, well, maybe that's not true. I, when I was, um, when I was an undergrad, back 15 years ago, I did take a couple of classes on permaculture. And so I'm back then the main text was like the Bill Mollison text. And so I'm kind of familiar with, um, with, with some of the permaculture principles, but I'm by no means an expert. So you guys would absolutely be my teachers in the regard of like how to farm and grow food and be with the land. And I just want to acknowledge that, um, that I don't have as much of a permaculture background as y'all. Um, but I have a little bit of the languaging and the concepts and of course deeply resonate with um, the little bit that I do know. So um, just that's a little bit about a little bit about me. Um, other things about me, I'm an herbalist. That's kind of my my first professional hat. I have a degree in herbal medicine from Bastyr University um, and herbal sciences from Bastyr University and um, uh, really grateful to that institution as well as to all of my other teachers. Um, folk teachers and um, uh, just other teachers that have helped me kind of deepen in my walk with with herbs and with the plants. And I'm also um, 
uh, my walk as an herbalist is kind of equal parts um, science and science and intuition, science and magic, knowledge and um, knowledge and intuition. And so I, I have kind of a lot of that scientific knowledge from my time at past year, but first and foremost and foundationally, I believe that um, that the relationship with the plants and kind of doing that relationship tending and what I would call like the dreaming with the plants is is the most important thing and what kind of gives 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 the herbal medicine the most juice. So um, so that's that's the first hat I wear as an herbalist. And then the other hat I wear is as a dream worker. So I actually am certified as a dream worker. That is a, something that somebody can get certified in. And I got certified through the Marin um, the Marin County Center for Projected Dream Work. And that was the organization of my teacher, Jeremy, that I mentioned. And so um, what I'm gonna be sharing with you today is kind of a mashup of, um, of kind of my experience with dreaming, basic foundational dreaming techniques and tactics um, that you can hopefully just like take and apply if you choose to. And then I'm going to do some of my own personal stories about some of the fruits of harvest that have come from my experience of dreaming with the land. And then I'm going to talk about one of my favorite dreaming plant allies, mugwort. So kind of going to, um, I don't know, give you as much as I can. And my, my hope and my intention and my prayer is that you can come away from this talk with just feeling like you can, if you want, engage your dreaming self. Um, to be able to to deepen your walk as a human with the land that you live on, whatever relationship you have with that land. So, um, yeah, when Shaylee asked me to do a talk for you guys, I she was like, yeah, you could either do like herbs or dreams, because um, those are kind of my two things. And I sat with it and I was like, well, what do I want to talk on? And um, the dreaming with the land theme is what came up. So, um, so that's what we're going to be doing. Um, just so I have my bearings, Shaylee, should I be like tracking the chat or? No, you don't need to. We can keep an eye on that and ask you questions at the end. And if you feel like pausing for dialogue or anything, you can facilitate that and ask me if there's questions or let people ask you them. I, I leave that up to you. Okay, I'm gonna hide my chat then so it doesn't yeah, distract me. Totally, it, it, it could be very distracting. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a way to, actually, I don't know if there's a way that you can make it so that I'm not just staring at my face really Yeah, big. in the upper right hand of your screen, there's a bunch of little tiny boxes, like a grid looking thing. Oh, that there we go. The okay, yep. that's too much. I was like, that is a big reflection of me on a screen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. So um, first thing, so first I'm going to talk about just some like basic, what I would call dreaming cosmology. Um, and because this is a, a, a permaculture group, I thought that we could ref, um, engage with this section um, with the phrase, how do we build healthy soil for dreams? Like, how do we, what is, what are the techniques and tactics that we can do to like build a healthy mental soil or psychic soil that is very inviting and nutritious for the dreams to want to come and be planted and grow? So. Um, if you come from the culture that I come from, which is like the West, Western Americanized culture, you are probably like me, um, or maybe like me, or maybe some of you can relate to my story of um, just not really feeling raised in a way that, um, in a culture that nurtures and honors dreams, or even like counts them as anything significant or worth mentioning. I know for me, I was raised in a familial and societal culture that just, I mean, at the very, at the very best would be like, oh, that's a sweet dream. Um, but more commonly it would be, you know, dreams would just be written off like, oh, that, that was just a dream or, oh, so-and-so she's just a dreamer and, you know, with a negative connotation. And so we really, um, I really wasn't raised in a culture that was taught in any way to honor my dreams as anything other than these kind of throwaways of the psyche. So, um, the first thing to like integrate or take, you know, take home is if you can relate to that at all, then you're where I suggest that you start engaging with the dream time is, is shifting that, is building, shifting those kind of belief structures that you may or may not have been aware of that could be contributing to how healthy your psychic soil is for the dreams to come. So um, I'm gonna, there's a, um, there's an awesome dream teacher I'll just show you her book right now. Some of you might have 
heard of her because her work kind of is dreaming and other things, but it's Tokopa Turner. Her book is Belonging. This is an amazing book. So she's a contemporary dream worker. Um, she's also just like a, a ritualist and theorist and just awesome, awesome human being. Um, but she has a very beautiful, poignant way of um, saying that our work as dreamers is that we want to become hospitable to our dreams. We want to make ourselves hospitable. So we want to, um, we want to, yeah, we want to have an invitational presence or have a mental state and, and approach to dreams that kind of invites them to come, that like sets a seat at the table for them. So I'm just going to read a couple or a handful of quotes from um, what I would call dream elders in the Western tradition that you can just like kind of open your mind and heart and let in um, and see if any of it is like feels new to you or lands anywhere or maybe it's like yeah old news get on with it lady but here are some quotes. Um, so this one is by uh, Clarissa Pinkola Estes. Some of you may know she wrote Women Who Run With the Wolves. So she says, dreams are a letter from home. <clears throat> Carl Jung, the great um, 20th century um, psychologist says, we have forgotten the age old fact that God speaks chiefly through dreams and visions. <clears throat> Toko Pa Turner, who's that woman that I just showed you her book. She says, to be approachable to dreams and to mystery we have to cultivate an inner hospitality, like the host who prepares an extra helping of food, a fire in the hearth, and a seat at the table, even when guests aren't expected. Uh, belonging always begins with an invitation. This is another one from Carl Jung. Dreams are the facts from which we must proceed. This is from my teacher, beautiful little dancing crow. Uh, I asked her to say, give me like a one-liner about dreams and she just cackled and was like oh my god i just can't imagine navigating life and this world without the guidance of dreams which i very much agree with <clears throat> this is another one from carl young all day long i have exciting ideas and thoughts but i take up in my work only those to which my dreams direct me this is from robert moss who is another like kind of prominent dream elder in the Western tradition currently. I believe that seven generations beyond us, those who look back on our time will find that it was the cry of the trees that helped to restart the dreaming and foster the understanding that we must dream not only for ourselves, but also for our communities and for all that shares life with us in this fragile bubble of air. <clears throat> I'm just going to do a couple other um, just kind of soil building uh, sharings about dreams. Um, this is this is what my teacher Jeremy Taylor. This was his um, list that he gave to all people who were first wanting to start engage with dreams and he called it basic assumptions about dreams. So these are things that if one is wanting to do any kind of intentional dream work, which is what I'll be sharing a little bit about today that these are kind of basic assumptions. So he suggests that you assume these things before you start engaging your dreams. So first thing, all dreams speak a universal language and come in the service of health and wholeness. There is no such thing as a bad dream, only dreams that sometimes take a dramatically negative form in order to grab our attention. Next. Um, there is no such thing as a dream with only one meaning. All dreams and dream images are overdetermined and have multiple meanings and layers of significance. Next, no dreams come just to tell you what you already know. All dreams break new ground and invite you to new understandings and insights. Next, all dreams reflect inborn creativity and ability to face and solve life's problems. And then finally, when you're talking to others about their dreams, like if somebody shares a dream with you, it's both, it's wise and polite to preface your remarks with words to the effect of, as I dream your dream and my dream of your dream, et cetera, and to keep this commentary in the first person as much as possible. And if anybody, we might have a little practice time with that, if anybody has any dreams they wanna share at the end. Um, but I think I'll pause there and just see if anybody has like, 
any what I call like burning score me questions or comments that um, they want to share. Um, I was trying to keep track of some of the things you were saying, but then I realized you might have a handout you could share with us if that's written down. Yeah, totally. I have all this stuff written down. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, that was my only one from cool. me or the chat. Anybody else? Nope. Okay. Um, so I actually, this was two nights ago when I was like thinking about what I would talk about for you guys here. I had this dream image that came and the dream image was working with the zones, like the permaculture zones. And I saw like a map of the zones and it was like work with the zones to explain like the layers of the psyche. So, um, I'm just going to go into talking about the zones of the psyche just to give you a little context for like where and how we plug into the concept of dreaming with the land. So I'm not the best artist, but I'm going to hold up this like super fancy <laughs> uh, drawing just so that you like have a visual and then I'll read it. And if you want, if this like is resonant with your learning style, just go ahead and like draw, you know, draw like the house in the middle and then the zones around and you can fill it in as I talk. <clears throat> so basically if you, you think about the house in the middle is, which is, I don't know, is that zone one or zone zero? Maybe I'll drop the metaphor. But if the house in the middle is, that's your waking consciousness. So that's like what you are, what you are aware of, that you're aware of about yourself, about your world, about your environment, that is your awareness. That's your conscious awareness. <clears throat> the next layer outside of that is your what's called your personal unconscious so your unconscious material so it's things from your from your past that you may or may not that you may not be aware of it's thing depending on what your beliefs are um, spiritually and cosmologically it could be you know what was the first of, one? huh what was the first what was the first one in the middle the center your waking consciousness waking like awake And that's like what you are aware of, that you know about yourself, that you know about your world. And then the next layer is your personal unconscious. So that's all which is still um, outside of your zone of awareness, but about yourself, still at that personal level. So I was saying like memories from your past that you may, um, that you may not remember, that you may have forgotten, um, and then I was saying, depending on your spiritual beliefs, it might be, you know, soul gifts that are lying dormant within you that are still coming into fruition. It could be memories of times or lives past, if you believe in such a thing. <clears throat> but that's your personal unconscious. And then the next layer is the collective unconscious. And that is, that's a concept that came from Carl Jung. I'm sure you guys are some of you are familiar with and a way to orient to the collective unconscious is um, it's it links every person every person who has incarnated as a person has a link to the collective unconsciousness to the collective unconscious um, because it's kind of where the, the whole memory of all human beings everywhere that have ever been is stored is in the collective unconscious and that's where the concept of archetypes um, resides, if you're familiar with that term, <clears throat> another kind of collective, um, collective thought, thought forms and memories and history. And then the next layer is where I put in the land. So yeah, so I want to read a quote from this woman. Her name is Sharon Blackie. Um, she wrote a book, she's a Celtic mythologist who's, you know, pretty well known right now. And she wrote a book called When Women Rise Rooted. Um, she also wrote a book called The Enchanted Life. And she's doing, filling a great hole, in my opinion, of kind of weaving in Celtic mythology and spirituality um, uh, for, for modern folks. <clears throat> so she says, I just think that she captures it really well. Imagine that the land is a great living creature. 
Imagine that creature is sleepy sometimes and dreams. If you show up and listen, you might catch the residue of those dreams. You might fall into the land's dreaming and who knows then what thing will be born. So when we live on a piece of land, which we all do, um, <clears throat> we, we automatically are kind of plugged into the dream of that land. And what is present in the dream of that land is, um, and this comes from, I'm pulling right now from the work of Carl Jung, from the work of Robert Moss, um, from the work of Choco Pa Turner, Sharon Blackie. When we reside on a piece of land, we're plugged into the dream of that land. And what's there is the dream, we are plugged into the memory of that land. So the history of that land, um, we get connected there. We're plugged into the ancestors of that land. <clears throat> and so we can be visited by, um, by ancestral spirits from that land, ancestral memories. We're also plugged into the dream of all the other inhabitants that we share the land with, both um, human and non-human, both corporeal and non-corporeal. So um, the animals and the plants, but also if you believe in such things like the nature spirits and the plant devas and, and those kinds of things. So we get plugged into um, almost like that becomes a layer in our psyche when we reside in a certain place and how much we, um, how relevant that becomes to our life depends on how much we consciously engage with that, with that fact or not. And opening up, engaging the night, the dream time is a way of kind of facilitating that conversation. So that's like, the, that's the first intro and I'll come back to that. <clears throat> the next layer on that um, diagram, and I'm just going to show you guys again in case you are super interested in it, is this concept of the dream of the earth. And I don't know if any of you are familiar with that, but the dream of the earth is uh, a phrase coined by Thomas Berry, who was, uh, um, he was a, a, a scholar and um cultural historian of this past century who did a lot of the, he was a depth, psych, I would say he wasn't a depth psychologist, but depth psychologists do pull a lot from, from the work that he did. Um, and so his concept of the dream of the earth was basically this, this, and this is kind of my way of saying it, but that, so the de depth psychology kind of refers to this often as like Gaia theory maybe you've heard of that Gaia theory. So if, if the earth is, is one being or one consciousness that we can call Gaia, then every, everything, every being that, um, that is alive and is a part of Gaia is a part of Gaia. And um, it's almost like the way I see it is like, we're all like a cell of her being, right? And um, I call her her but we could just say Gaia. And that in that, in that, you know, that being that is Gaia, or another way of saying that is the dream of the earth, there is this kind of self-organizing um, infinite intelligence that flows through, which I think there's correlation with permaculture there, um, that wants to, that wants to, um, oh, lost my train of thought there that wants to maintain homeostasis, that wants to um, evolve life into more and more complexity, more and more diversity, and more and more balance. And there is this kind of, that, for, that like I said, the infinite intelligence, that force of life that is wanting to move life forward in a life-affirming way. Um, naturopathic doctors refer to that life force in the human body as the vis. Um, others refer to that as like the veriditas. So there is this function kind of within all beings, including human beings, because we are members of Gaia that wants to seek homeostasis and seek balance and seek, um, seek choices that serve all beings and serve the whole system, the, whole, the system as a whole. So that's the dream of the earth. Other, other ways of saying it, like I said, is that Gaia theory. It's also been referred to as the anima mundi um, the soul of the world is another way of saying that. Um, <clears throat> and so in, and this is said, what I'm about to say is said 
in many ways by many different cultures and schools of thought over many different times. And this is just one way of saying it, but um, we, we, um, there are ways of engaging in that conversation with the dream of the earth or the soul or the soul of the world. And in depth psychology, what they say is that ways of engaging with that dream of the earth that lives inside us are through things like night dreaming, daytime visions, <clears throat> conversations with nature, um, daytime synchronicities, and that it's not through the rational mind that we can have that conversation. Like it's not through our intellect that we get in touch with the dream of the earth. It's through these other ways um, that, that don't engage the intellect. And so that is why, in my opinion and in my experience, it's so kind of worthwhile to, um, to engage the dreams because in engaging the dreams we do kind of bypass that waking consciousness that rational mind that ego self that wants to you know keep it small and structured and we touch into those larger layers um you know the like i said the dream of the land and the and even the dream of the earth so that's kind of like the why on on why dreams um, and then the last layer that I, that's on this, on your zones is the universe, obviously the cosmos and that mythologist that I was telling you about Sharon Blackie, she has this phrase that I love that's called, um, that's called a psyche, the size of the universe. So like that, the more that we intend, the more that we intend to, um, kind of connect with all of life and open up and understand that we're being drunk with the land, with the land and with the earth. It kind of, it's like our psyche takes on like the size of the whole universe, because if you believe such things, which I do on some layer of reality, like we are all really one, we are all, so I, I and you and all of us are just cells of, you know, this greater consciousness that is Gaia. So dreams are a very powerful way to the best way I know really um, to kind of get out of my own way and get in touch with that something greater and that something wiser and that something more intelligent. So, um, I think I'll pause there and see if there's any questions. Hopefully that was clear. Thank you. Bringing my world. Oh, good. You cut out at the end, but I heard you say thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for bringing my world to permaculture. I want it and new to permaculture. I appreciate your connecting them. It helps. Oh, awesome. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Like I said, that all came from a dream. So I thank the something greater for that. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I'm uh, oh, sorry. Oh, no, please. I'm super interested in this um, idea of. Um, and practice of you know listening to our dreams in a way that connects us with with the land and um, with Gaia. Um, mm -hmm. I really feel like the land here is speaking, and you know I'm like I'm all ears, I'm all ears, but I'm trying to learn how to how to listen. Yeah. What to listen to? What am I listening for? And all of that. So thank you. I, I really am enjoying this. Yeah. Yeah, I understand that. I'm also trying to figure out how to learn and listen. Because if you come from the same culture that I do, we just, we weren't raised um, learning to listen. In fact, you know, we got a lot of brick, bricks piled on top of us that keep us from accessing that innate, what I believe to be an innate ability. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of end with giving my kind of, this is what I, this is what I did and think, you know, recommend doing to cultivate and nurture that um, capacity. Those what I believe to be innate capacities. Cool. Because I believe that they are, yeah. Um, so just to recap, I think this point was already made, but like, why, like, why? Why do we want to dream with the land? Like, what's, you know, what, what do we get out of it? And I hope the answers are obvious and there's many more that I'm about to say, but just a couple things like one one reason 
just to reiterate, is that dreaming bypasses our ego, gets us beyond our rational consciousness, and gets us more able to access that that dream of the earth or that dream of something greater. Um, and that's a very important thing. That's why, in my opinion and experience, like dreams, and I've done a lot of, um, not a lot, but, you know, I've engaged different ceremonial work and um, waking life stuff. And that's all really effective too. But I just, I'm like, man, dreams are just like a straight shot. <laughs> it's just like, it's just like, boom, because your ego gets out of the way. And it's just, and it's, so if you can just remember or, uh, yeah, remember how to, what I call dream tend or, you know, capture the dreams, then it's, yeah, it's, it's really, it's the most effective way I know, which is why I learned how to do it and teach it. Um, another reason why, because it, because it gets us out of ego consciousness, it is better for all beings and not just me, right? Like, it's not just, it's not just what I want to do with the land that I live on. It's, it's getting me outside and above just my small ego consciousness. And I think that we all understand that, that are on a call like this and why that is important. <clears throat> um, another what reason Albert Einstein um, said that um, we can't solve a problem with the same consciousness that created it. I think about that all the time. And, um, <clears throat> and I think about that now, you know, like the consciousness that got us to where we are now in terms of all of it, right? Like all of it, but it's even our farming and land tending. It's like, what about just going at it a different way? You know, what about going at it in a, in a, and this is not to discount rationality and all and, and, and knowledge because that's all equally important, but, um, but it helps. Yeah maybe we might be more equipped to solve the problems that we've inherited by going at it in a way than those who created the problems um, went at it. And then finally, a reason why to dream with the land is because we can, and like, it's possible, and it's super magical and um, healing and natural and, um, and just very possible. So, um, yeah. So I thought that what I might do, um, is just tell you guys a little bit about my story and like what I've experienced in dreaming with the land. And, um, I'm sure that some of this stuff will be like, um, oh, hold on. Somebody wrote in the chat dreaming for ourselves. Am I going to do this? Yeah, Kelda, let me, let's see if I touch on it. And if not, then I'll save time for questions and answers at the end. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so the, this is just some, some things that I've experienced. I just want to reiterate too that, so I've lived on this land that I live on now for um, two years. And um, remember, I'm not a permaculturist. I, um, so some of the stuff that the land has taught me through my dreams, you guys might be like, well, yeah, that's obvious. Like, <laughs> why didn't you know that permaculture principle or whatever? But just remember that it still is me. It's me evolving and being taught by and woven into the dream of the land that I now reside upon and share, share, share in. So just remember that with that disclaimer. Um, so First of all, the reason that I live here, so these are just, I'm just gonna kind of throw out a bunch of different examples and stories. <clears throat> Hopefully they're illustrative. The reason that I live where I live is because of a dream. Um, I was told, I didn't know my husband and I were looking all over the Pacific Northwest and didn't know where we were gonna go, um, where we were called. And then I had a dream where I was told to move to Squim. And um, I, because of, you know, the dream work that I've done and what I've known about, you know, life and consciousness, it was like, I was just like, yes, finally, the dream. Thank you. Now, remember that quote by Carl Jung, where he said, like, I have all these thoughts and ideas are in daytime, but it's the stuff that comes through my dreams that I actually take waking life action on. And I very much live in that same way now. So it was, for me, it was like, okay, boom. So we got, you know, so then it all got narrowed down. Um, <clears throat> 
when I got to this land, there was, there is this one kind of strip of um, road that's, um, that it's a, like a trail that is lined by alders. And when I saw the, this trail, I had seen this in, from a dream that I had um, probably a decade and a half ago. I recognized it and I was like, okay, this is, this is where I'm supposed to be. Um, <clears throat> shortly after living here, moving here, I had many, I had many dreams. Um, <laughs> I'll read, I don't know, I won't read one of those. I had many dreams where the land told me to go slow was basically the theme. Like it would be, and that, I know that you guys, permaculturists have that thing of like waiting a year before you do make any changes. And I knew that, but I kind of forgot it. And so the land was telling me in my dream time, like to basically go slow. I have a very, in terms of making changes and implementing this or that. I also have gotten, had many dreams where the land tells me, um, but really the land that I live on overall, the message it has been go slow and like slow down and stop. <clears throat> I'm a very like entrepreneurial, um, let's do this, do that, make that happen kind of person. I've made a lot happen in my life and I've gotten, I still am getting my butt kicked by the land telling me no, like, no, no, go slow. Um, I had a dream. I don't know if I wrote that one down for you guys, but I had a dream. I had this series of dreams where like, there was just that the land, there was just too many big parties. Like I was having big parties on the land, like really like out in the woods and it was just, it was bad. Like it wasn't going well. And then I knew the land was telling me that I was um, bringing too many people and not orienting in a sacred manner. So I had to change course. Um, the land has also told me um, not to commodify it. Like in terms of like, I realized that right when I got there, I was like, oh, I can, cause I'm an herbalist. Like I can wild harvest all this and I can wild harvest all that and I can make this. And the land has said, no like don't commodify me, um, ask. And also just like, I don't really wanna be harvested, which to me, like my ego consciousness is like, but oh my God, there's all this medicine here. I want to so bad, but yeah, there would be a word for that if I did that when it said no. And so I have to listen. Um, other small little stories. One night, both my husband and I had a dream that about a male cougar on the land and my husband is not a big dreamer. So anytime he has a dream, I know that it's, you know, the dream of the earth talking to him. But, um, so we both had that dream. And so the next day I just, I knew like, actually, no, I found out that next day from a neighbor that there was a cougar around. And so, you know, we didn't, we didn't go out that day. Um, I had a dream the first winter I moved here, there was a bunch of, um, we had like five feet of snow. I live up at 1700 feet and I had a, this was cool. I had a dream where there, this basically a hazelnut, we have a hazelnut tree on our property. And in the dream, the hazelnut asked me for help. It said it needed help. And so the next day I went down and sure enough, it was like kind of drowning from snow. And so we went and, you know, cleared the snow off. <clears throat> Um, I've had dreams of where to, like, where to put what, you know, like where to, um, yeah, where to put what. I've had dreams um, of certain ceremonies that the land wants to host that I, like, in my ego consciousness, really don't want to. But again, I know that I have to listen. Um, <clears throat> I had, there was a... Um, and I really recommend doing this if you live in a place where this is appropriate or, you know, possible. I've slept out on the land. I was sleep when I was sleeping out on the land for two nights, um, just doing like a visiting with the land. I was told other names that I could call, you know, the land and certain features of it. Um, and, um, and that felt very, I was very grateful for that. Um, I'll just read you a couple dreams that I was able to find. Okay, this one, you, perm you, you, you permaculturists will roll your eyes at me for this one. So I titled the dream, which one should always do, don't change the land too much. <clears throat> 
I'm walking from the barn up to the pond and there are all these big toys that were around, like this big lookout thing and other big industrial things. And I felt that the land now felt different, that we had done too much to it. And I wondered if we'd messed up. So I took, I came away from that dream being like, and we hadn't even done that much from my ego consciousness, right? But being like, shit, we gotta slow down. Like, so I have so many dreams like that. Just like slow down, don't, you know, don't change. Um, and I really loved this one too. This one was called Sweetgrass. There was this chunk of land um, on the land we live, like literally an oval of earth. And it was somehow the solution to the predicament or a predicament. And there was sweet grass growing out of it. And I was pleased and surprised that I was witnessing this chunk of earth and that it was growing sweet grass. Um, so those are just some of my, some of my stories, but I think that that kind of illustrates the like, the like why what, and again, I know that like you permaculturists are probably already hip to like asking permission and, you know, um, waiting and not doing too much, but, um, I know for myself, it's been, a humbling <laughs> to be um to be to be dreamt um to be dreamt by the land in that way so i think i'll pause again and see if there's any questions or comments there's the one question about describing the edge between dreaming for ourselves and little things even if it's, even if it's yeah. dreaming, plants need to be watered and then dreaming about a moment or a place in, into the greater subconscious. So, yeah. So for that one, I will um, remind you of, I read this. So one of the things that I read when we were doing the kind of basic soil building was um, there's no such thing as a dream with only one meaning. All dreams and dream images have multiple meanings and layers of significance. So, um, that's what I would say to that is like, is dreams really get in the, they're non-rational, they're non-logical and they don't ever just mean one thing. And that can be really frustrating for people that come from a culture like I do, where we're used to like, we're so knowledge driven and so like reductionist where it's like, well, what's the right answer? You know, what is the answer? And with dreams, they don't fit in that box. There's not one answer. There's layers of answer. And even the answer unfolds and changes over time. Like I've had many dreams that meant one thing that, that when I first had it felt like it was about me and my world. But then a decade later, it was like, holy crap. Like that was also foreshadowing this huge collective thing that just unfolded that I had no idea about. So it was like about me but it was also about the collective unconscious and it was, you know, so um, what I would say is that the, what we say in dream, what I call dream tending or dream, dream weaving is you engage at the level that it feels relevant. So like if it feels to you like, oh, this is a personal dream, then that's just how you engage with it. And then you will, if you haven't yet, have dreams that feel different. And that's the best way I know how to describe it, is it just feels different. Um, and, and you know it's different, what Jeremy Taylor calls the aha. Like if I were to, if you were tell, to tell me about, you know, you had a dream of the plants needing to be watered and I would share with you like, oh, well, if that were my dream, I would think about like, do your plants actually need to be watered? That's called like a waking life reality check. And then if I say like, also, if that were my dream, I would think about like the plants as a metaphor and the plants make me think about the earth and, you know, how she's starving for water. And maybe I can do more to water like the greater seeds. And I might tell you a bunch of different things. And then your job is to be like, okay, where does that really give me this aha? Like, where am I like, oh yeah, that's, that's it. That's it right there. And that's the level you work at. And that's the level you work at because that's where your edge is currently. And that edge might, will change in a month or a decade. And then you would work that at that, that new edge. Um, so that's what I'd say to that. Another thing I would say to that is that if you are in a chapter of having a lot of dreams about just like really mundane stuff, 
then um, it might just be that that's what your life is about right now. <laughs> you know, like your life is about a bunch of mundane stuff and maybe a way that you could like unclog that channel is to, especially if you keep dreaming about the same kind of mundane stuff, um, just like clear that list kind of in waking life, which like opens the channel that then new stuff can come through. That's the same, like people ask a lot like, well, I just have anxiety dreams every night. Like, why would I want to, you know, engage my dreams? I, uh, I just dream like about anxiety. It's like, well, do you have anxiety in waking life? Yes, it's really bad. Well, maybe if you took steps in waking life to like shift that anxiety, whatever that means for you, then that might shift, like unclog the channel so that new stuff can come through. Like the dreams give us, this is kind of like nuanced, but whatever it's dream work like the dreams will give us what we can handle and not more um will actually give us like the very edge of what we can handle because they always break new territory um but that's more for that's more for um personal dreams what i would say well actually i'll stop there does that kind of give you some stuff to chew on kelda yeah cool um Okay, so we have 20 minutes. So I'll just talk a little bit about um, if you're wanting, so first. Right, we started 15 minutes late too, so don't be too stressed about that. We have our like open meal session afterwards. So if we have conversations at the end and it goes over a bit, that's okay. So don't feel pressure. Awesome. Thanks, Shaylee. Um, so if you're wanting, so just like put aside the dream of the land for a second. And just like if you're wanting to engage your dreaming self more, then um, I want to give you some steps for how to do that <laughs> to kind of how I say, like to open up your dreaming self or to expand your dreams or in other ways, like invite your to become more hospitable to your dreams. So the first thing and actually all of these things are going to seem really obvious, but most of the powerful things in life are right. The first thing is to have a strong intention to do so like intend, have a strong intention to dream more. Like I want to dream more. Um, and you can do some kind of whatever is in alignment with your being and your psyche, do some kind of intention setting before you go to bed. Some, some version of a mantra or an affirmation like this, like I am really, I really want to have dreams tonight. Um, I want to remember my dreams and I want to remember my dreams upon waking. And then you can just kind of sit there and fo and like focus on that. Just like really plant those seeds in your psyche. Um, if you connect, if you have a relationship with any kind of higher power or a name for the higher power or any like spiritual guides or allies that connect you to the higher power, then you can by all means call on them and say like, like for me, it's like great spirit, please like, please, I really want to open my dreams. I want to have dreams tonight and I want to remember them upon awakening. Um, I want to have, I want to have dreams tonight. I want to remember them upon awakening. So some kind of like two to five minute intention setting affirmation mulling over in your mind before you go to bed, a, dream, a ritual um, is really, really powerful. Um, that basically in a nutshell is what like Tibetan dream yoga is and Tibetan Buddhism. It's like doing these various, you know, intention setting things to help kind of train your mind to, um, to dream. So do some kind of intention setting at bed, um, invoke the a higher power. If you have, if you do such a thing, otherwise just do, you know, mind affirmation. Um, and then the next big thing, so first what I want to say is energy follows intention. Like that's a, I, I'm going to say it's a universal law. Like it's like if you have, if whatever you focus on more draws more energy to it. So if you focus on and intend to dream more then your dreams, will, it will happen. Um, and all the dream teachers that I've ever sat in circle with say basically what I just said. This isn't just me giving you some cop out answer. Um, the next most important thing is that you have a dream journal. And I know that that's really annoying for a lot of people. It was for me when I was first starting, but it's a, it's an important mind training thing. So you have to have a journal, um, 
or something right by your bed with a pen or pencil that you write in immediately upon awakening. And the thing to what can be like an edge for people is they're like, oh, it doesn't make sense. It's just scramble. It's like, well, yeah, it's dreams. Dreams are non-linear. They're non-rational. So you just write down whatever you remember. And it's important that you commit to and follow through on writing down whatever you remember, because that sends that feedback to, you know, your subconscious or however you want to say it. It's like, look, and like, I'm, you set me the dreams and I'm doing my work to write down the dreams and, and here, look, look what I'm doing. We all dream four to seven times a night. That's just a thing that humans do. And I'm at a point in my journey right now where I remember, I remember four dreams a night. Sometimes it's two or three, but it's usually four dreams a night. And I'm also at a place in my practice right now where, um, what I do is I just have like scratch paper next to my bed and because I wake up during the night. And so I write, I scribble in the middle of the night. And then I used to usually have like four scribbles that then the next morning when I'm in waking consciousness, I read and I'm like, what was I? Oh yeah, that thing. And then I can like pull it back, you know, it's like kind of pull it back like a rope. And then, and then that's what I type up. And then I type my dreams so that I have a log of them. And the benefit of having the log is that I can refer back to them because I'm at a point now where it's just fascinating to, to track and see like what I was dreaming into being, you know? Um, so those are honestly the two big things, have a strong intention and keep a dream journal beyond that kind of secondary things that you can do. You can work with, um, certain herbs. Like I'll talk about the herb mugwort, um, Artemisia. Um, Artemisia vulgaris is the European mugwort. Um, What is the local one here, Shaylee? Sudstorkii? I think so, I'm not sure, I'll check though. Mugwort, yeah, is known as like the dreaming, dream weaving um, herb. So you can, um, this is what the vulgaris looks like. I'll just talk about it now. So you can work with mugwort in a number of ways. You could wrap it up in a bundle and burn it um, as smoke, as incense. You could infuse it into an oil and put it, um, anoint your forehead before going to bed. You could drink a cup of mugwort tea before going to bed. And again, that, that just kind of gets woven into your nighttime ritual and you can always best practices to ask like from your heart the plant like for help you know um and um you could just put a little sachet under your bed just like work with mugwort to kind of get get into your into your psychic field so to speak and then beyond that if you're really serious about the whole dreaming thing then just like obviously just like anything like penny was saying at the end of her talk like you just follow the threads like if dreaming is something that is really alive for you then take classes join a dream group um i highly recommend joining a dream group like highly 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 um and if you're on the olympic peninsula i host a dream group um and the read read books um i'll send a list of books that i love and recommend um for folks that are just wanting to get started so um yeah that's kind of how i say like how to open up your dreaming self or how to expand your dreams and then this is i guess just more less like specific but just in general you want to really like i was saying like build that healthy soil for your dreams because for if you're from a culture like I am, that's kind of the biggest impediment is that we have all this like mental, I have all this, these mental programs that are like, that just automatically will like shut down, be like, oh, it's just a dream. Oh, that's no, well, that was weird. Like, and so it's really just like rewiring your minds kind of, and reading, reading books is a great way to do that. And talking with people that are, you know what I mean? You just kind of get a new terrain in there that makes you hospitable um, for the dreams. So if you're wanting to dream with, if you, if you're wanting to dream with land that you live upon, 
which I recommend doing. Um, it's, it's honestly very similar to what I just said about how to open your dreams. You, it's about having, have a strong intention, like have the intention to dream with the land. Um, hold that intention in your mind and also bring that intention in your waking life to the land that you live upon and share your intention with them. Also, if you haven't like introduced yourself to the land that you live on, start there, you know, like start by going out honestly, authentically, humbly and saying, hi, hello, I'm Lauren. I live here now. Um, I'd like to introduce myself. This is my daughter and my dogs and my husband. And I really want to live with you and on you um, in a good way, in a way that serves you, in a way that serves all of your, all of the earth's children that call this land home, including myself. And um, I'm wanting to have that conversation with you. And I also want to open up if you want to send me any, any insights in the dream time. It can be as simple as that. If it's within your cosmology or your practice, then you can, uh, leaving an offering is always nice. You know, it's always nice to leave a gift um, in exchange. Um, I don't think it's necessary. I don't know. Yeah. So like I, I will always, cause I'm an herbalist too. Like I always have just like an offering blend that I, you know, carry around for, for such things. And so I'll just leave a pinch um, you can also just like sing a song, whatever, just like, I think the first step is to authentically introduce yourself and connect. And then before going to bed, um, repeat that intention. You know, I'm really wanting to dream with the land, with the land tonight and connect with the land and connect with your intention and just kind of be, be stirring and stewing that around in your mind and your heart as you fall asleep. And then when you wake up, write down everything that you remember. And also remember that with dreams, um, the more the more you feel like the fuck was that about, like the juicier the dream usually is, because that means that it's like so foreign to your conscious mind that it's like, you know, that it's like that it's that um, it's that groundbreaking to your psyche. Um, so write it down, and you know we just because we aren't the masters of the universe like it doesn't always work it just doesn't sometimes we don't i don't have a dream you know i've like hosted i've been like dream retreats and not had a dream and that sucks but i'm not the master of the universe and that's okay you know you just keep trying and it, or you keep asking and it will happen i guarantee it will happen um and then <clears throat> That's really it. Remember, remember that, that it's gonna, remember that dreams always feel like they're breaking new ground and moving you into new consciousness. So always, if you're really being honest and like really being mm, committed in your dream tending work, it's gonna feel like it might've felt for me, like a little ouchy, like when Lan kept telling me to like slow down sister. Like I had to be, you know, you got to be really like kind of committed <laughs> to, you know, to not, not having your will be done. Um, and um, so just know that, that it might, that there are like, we do have like ego defenses that are like, well, you know, but just like kind of push through those. Um, <clears throat> finally, I highly recommend that if you do get any so before I say that actually sometimes dreams are really freaking clear like sometimes like you just and not all the time and you can never control when it is or isn't but sometimes there's just like a voice that's like plant the garden right here and it's like sweet thank you <laughs> or move to squim you know it's like awesome that's great um if you either get a clear message or you get a not clear message, but that through sitting with the dream, you figure out what the message is. I highly recommend you, um, you take it to heart and like honor what is being, what you're receiving. Um, 
yeah, and that's obviously just best practices for any kind of relationship tending, but um, yeah. Um, I feel like I want to give you guys just a couple of like basic dream tending things you can do on your own too. So let's say you got a dream and you write it down and you're like, what does that mean? Which is how they usually are, right? Like there's a cougar and a car and like a water bottle and, you know, and it's back in 1990. Like, what does that mean? So what you can do is, this is my favorite dream tending method for when I'm doing it by myself, is get a piece of paper and make two columns on the paper. So like literally you can like fold it in half or just draw a line down the middle. And on the left, the first column, write down every symbol in your dream. So cougar, um, what else did I say? Car, water bottle, 1990s or 1990 at that one house I used to live in and whatever the, all the other symbols are. And then you go to the right-hand side and you write down the first thing that comes into your mind. The first thing, like free, this is called free association. Um, so cougar, feminine power, water bottle, um, consumerism, um, like unethical consumerism, car, um, for me, it's like, I, I'm getting a new car soon. So it's like moving into a new chapter. Um, what else did I say? That 1990, um, babysitter's house and everything that happened there. And I just made that one up, but even doing this, I'm like, wow, there's probably something there for me. But then you go back and read the dream, reread the dream by replacing the symbols with those words. Does that make sense? So then, and then it can, and then, and again, it's not dream tending doesn't, it doesn't always be like, oh yeah, it's this prophecy coming to tell me about the next step in my life, but it gets you somewhere. Like it gets you, it gets you, it gets you somewhere that you can engage with and then start start to engage with. And so actually I'm ashamed that I didn't already say this. The final most important step with dream tending is after you've done that is that you take some action in waking life to integrate. So like it could be, if you've done that process of like the two columns and you get somewhere, then you need to do something to bring that energy into waking life. So for example, a very mundane example is like, when I got the dream to move to SQUIM, my like waking life action was like, let me look up real estate agents and SQUIM. You know, when I had the dream about the sweet grass, my waking life action was I sought out um, somewhere that I could buy sweet grass starts to plant in this little garden bed that I had. Um, you, you do something and doing that something is what kind of keeps, it keeps that, that energy moving, that like, energy that wants to evolve you towards more wholeness and health moving. And if it's, this is with the land, you know, then, then you absolutely want to take that action to keep moving the dream of the land forward in the way that it is wanting to. Um, <clears throat> so I think that's it. Um, I'll just do a final plug for the, yeah, the herb mugwort, um, the artemisias. Like I said, just because I'm an herbalist and I assume you all love, or at least don't hate plants, um, mugwort is my favorite herb to work with for dream weaving. She has a lot, she comes to me as a she, so I say she has a long folkloric history in Europe um, and met like a lot of the European traditions for um, just helping to open up the dreaming self, connecting us to the wisdom self, but doing so in a way that's not like rending the veil, you know, it's not like a psychedelic where it's like, it's, it's like gently, kind of gently opening and soothing, soothingly opening so that the wisdom self can um, kind of rise up and, and be connected, it's like kind of gently opening the veils and then helps with recall. So I will always work with mugwort um, when I'm wanting to, 
dream more intentionally. I'll recommend it if others are. If I ever do like a dream retreat or a dream ceremony, I'll always work with mugwort. Um, so I share that with you. Also, if you don't know mugwort, she grows really, really well in the Pacific Northwest. Um, really easy to care for, like, you know, uh, yeah. Um, and warning that she does spread both vegetatively and by seeds. So you just want to keep an eye on her unless you want her to go everywhere. She was on the noxious weed list in Washington for a while. Um, what are your favorite ways to use mugwort? Yeah, I like to, so like this is a dried mugwort um, kind of wand, you might call it a smudge wand that I like, you can like burn it and cleanse your space, your sleeping space, your bed before, before bed and just like connecting with mugwort, um, sharing your good intentions for dreaming. I also have, like I've said, this is some oil. So I I'll infuse it in her in oil and then just like rubber on my um, forehead and heart before bed. Again, connecting with her and that intention. Um, I wanna hear Shaylee, you say more about not using mug, overusing. Oh, I didn't say anything about overusing mugwort. Somebody did, but I did list the three native types of mugwort and where their habitats are and what they look like. Um, we have three native mugworts that are pretty easy to um, pick or get little little bits and root in your garden. Hmm. And there's a chat from Shauna. I know I thought that was me saying something too. It looks a lot like Shady. Yeah, I'm reading Shauna's thing too. Mugwort interrupts sleep in order to stimulate dreams. Therefore, there's a price to pay for sleep loss for increasing dream anxiety. It can intensify dreams. Maybe have in long uh, uh, nightmares that can last for months or years. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and I, as, as like a tea person, for that being my jam, I really don't recommend much mugwort tea. I put yeah. a little tiny like trace amount of it in one dreamer blend, and I put such a little amount that I thought it could be like, a homeopathic dose of mugwort, mostly for the fragrance it would imbue, not for any mugwort it would actually like put in the thing that we ingest. I, yeah. I agree that you don't really want to consume it, except like top topically, smudging with it, using it as like a skin oil or making a mugwort pillow, all that that we get in the volatile compounds is like funny. It's really powerful. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Thank you. Yeah, when I recommend, when I have that's why I usually work with it more like topically. Um, for a tea, I'll have people do like a really light tea, like just like, you know, like one leaf or something. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, that's a good point that um, that Shauna made. I'm really sorry that happened, Shauna. That sounds um, like not a very restful five years of sleep. Um, but I ha so I haven't had that experience specifically with mugwort and my experience mugwort has been very gentle, but that's definitely something to think about it, in general. I don't recommend people. I don't recommend people do work to open up their dreaming self unless they feel really called to, um, or like if they already are excessive dreamers, which some people are, then, you know, opening up the dreams more, um, can definitely be too much and disrupt, you know, restfulness. If anybody's in an acute trauma state or even like PTSD, or they're just working through a lot of heavy material in their waking life, that's not a wise time to speak to dream more because that stuff, like I was saying, like with the daytime anxiety dreams, like it does um, ripple through into the, into the dream life. So you, to, yeah, when you're doing these practice, the, the time to open up your dreams is when you're feeling um, grounded, stable, um, and really curious and inspired from a, from a very grounded place to, to dream more. But if, um, there's times of intensity, whether that's in waking life or just like psychic intensity, that's not the time. It's just not pleasant and not wise. So thank you, Shauna, for bringing that in. So I think that's, that's what I got for y'all. Um, and I'm happy to stay on for a few minutes if people have questions. Yeah, I think someone just started asking a question. Yeah, so I've got a question, but I also, the, the acute trauma, I've also had dreams be the only thing while I'm in an acute trauma place in my life to tell me which direction to go forward to, where nothing else I could trust, you know? 
So just a both or and there. But I was curious, uh, you, I mean, with the activity of listing the symbols, so what stock do you put in like dream dictionaries and kind of collective symbols compared to personal symbols? Yeah, so I, I believe that the, the most important thing, and I've learned this from every dream teacher I've sat with, the most important thing is what your associations are with, with the symbol, period. Um, and because if I dream about, um, if I dream about the planet Venus and I tell you my associations, it's going to be very different. I might tell you about this memory I had of seeing Venus back when I was, you know, making out with so-and-so on wherever. Whereas you might talk about when you were in astrology class back in whatever year. And like, those are very different. That gets us to very different territory. So, um, well, then where dream dictionaries, where's that come from? You know, like, yeah, I mean, I think there's a bit of a both and to it too, you know, so we can talk about like the collective unconscious, like, you know, Venus also exists in the collective unconscious as, you know, as a deity and as a planet. And so what I like to say is what I like to, what I like to do, I guess, is this is I'll always do my associations, but if there's anything where I'm like, I have no idea. Like if I dream about, like I had dreams about um, a stingray for a few years there. And I'm like, I have never had an interaction with a stingray. Like I, you know, so then I'll look it up and then I'll do that same and I'll read through a bunch of different resources. And then I'll do that kind of same thing where I'm waiting for that aha, where it's like, Ooh, you know? So it's really just it's kind of like, it's picking up crumbs and following the threads and, you know, and, um, and sometimes it's there, it's useful to, to engage. I would, I would actually say it is a both hand. However, I think that what I've experienced is that I or others I know might without knowing better tend to just go straight to the dream, d dream dictionary, but what might, so there might be just like a balancing act that needs to happen of like, Hey, also remember your own associations and like engage both until you get to that place of juice, you know, where it's like, Ooh, yeah, now we're, now we're talking. Any other questions, comments? Hi, I had a uh, question. Uh, first, I want to say thank you for sharing. I'm glad that this conversation arose. Um, and I kind of wanted to hear if you had any um, stories to share or any personal experiences with some of the things that I have experienced. So um, when I was younger, but throughout growing up, I remember having extremely vivid dreams that were, uh, I guess, psychic. Like I would dream something and it would happen exactly as I dreamed it like the next day and it, it happened very often um, while I was growing up and it's been I don't know maybe seven years or so that I don't really dream anymore at mm -hmm. all and um, I know I've heard about um, like marijuana affecting dreams Mm -hmm. I wonder if, you know, your thoughts on that, if that might have to do with it. And also, um, if you have any other herbs or uh, natural medicines that you would uh, suggest to work with, um, I'm really into it. And, you know, I make tinctures and a lot of, drink a lot of the all the time. Um, so I'm just wondering if there's anything that you think would help me specifically uh, overcome or I guess just reconnect with my dreams and also um, just open maybe just allow me to be more open to the possibility of dreaming and, and yeah, being more in touch with my mind and myself. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um... Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot in what you shared. Um, I think it's normal to 
oscillate to have chapters of really rich dreaming and then chapters of not very many dreams at all. You know, like life is a cycle and we go, we just, you know, I've, I've definitely had chapters where it's just like, wow. Like I looking back, I'm like, I literally think I, in that chapter, like had all the dreams that I would need for the next seven years. And like, you know, and I, so I think in a lot of ways, it's just normal. Um, oh, my speaker view changed. My face is really big. Again. There we go. Um, and then, so I think it's normal. I also think it's normal to have really having prophetic dreams, um, I believe is also normal. And I believe that we can't control when they happen and when they don't. It's kind of one of those mysteries where like, gosh, I wish that I could have a prophetic dream every night, but like, it's not my will be done here. You know, it's, it's the great thy. So it's just kind of like when I have the prophetic dreams, I'm just kind of like, wow, thanks. Like I'm open for more of that, but I know that, you know, it's not up to me. So, um, when that happens, I just kind of say, thank you. Um, and, and it does happen for sure. Um, I do, I do believe that marijuana, uh, helps the dreams for sure. And there's a medicine in that. Like I will work with, um, marijuana or hops, humulus, it's cousin in the cannabinaceae family for folks that like somebody was, when somebody was like having too excessive dreams, when somebody's in a process of having too much dreams, like too much dreams, not enough restfulness, excessive night terrors, et cetera. Then I think that there's a medicine in working with hops or cannabis to help kind of tone that down so that restfulness can be experienced. Um, but yeah, I do, I do very much believe that um, cannabis does affect the dream time. Um, and I would say, Joe, that like all the stuff that like we've talked about, just like having, just like having that strong intention, like if you really feel like like from your wisdom self, like, yeah, it's really time to like get those dreams back. Then just like have that intention. Um, and you could work with mugwort, um, in a, you know, as a smudge or an oil, or you could work with lavender, like all the plants that are good for sleep are also helpful for dreaming. Um, and just, but really I think it's having that intention would, and then having a dream journal, um, and then joining a dream group if you can, um, reading the books, et cetera. Remember that like energy follows intention thing. Um, I think that that's what I found to be the, the most effective way at kind of calling the dreams back online. So yeah, thanks for that. There was a lot in there. Yeah. And, um, so for someone here, um, Carolina, Lauren lives, um, just west of Squim. So if you didn't mind carpooling or driving a little bit, there are people from Port Townsend, and Hadlock that come out to Lauren's like dream stuff sometimes. So you can get a hold of Lauren. Her her website and contact information is um, on our schedule. And I think her Venmo is on there too, if anyone wants to make an, uh, 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 like a love donation to her for her time here. We're gonna transition into gratitudes for our, um, for our closing circle pretty soon. But I had another comment about um, um, dream channel for conversation and discord. Yeah, that's, we, we have, um, Lauren, we have some communication systems that we set up for permaculture people. So that's a way to have the conversation going. Um, and I, I put in there Shadavari root and valerian are pretty common herbs that are deeply linked to dream power. And uh, Shadavari is a traditional Ayurvedic woman's herb. And I'm not sure about the history of valerian that much. I haven't really looked into it, but it's a very powerful sleepy herb that can also induce dreamings. So um, those are two that are totally safe to ingest and can be beneficial. Yeah, and Cassie said that she set up a dreams uh, channel in Discord. So if you want to talk dreams with people, that's a good place too. And so uh, if we have another, just like a round of just a sentence of questions and um, gratitude to you, Lauren, for sharing. I think this is such a, a fitting way to, it's like dreams are, are where the, like the composts, Dreams are like almost like a, a fertile bed for the seeds of what's happening this weekend and all these ideas and relationships we've made. So having all of that new information and relationships come at us and that's all a part of our dreams and ourself now. So this was such a great way to sort of digest a lot of the things we've been thinking about all weekend. And thank you for coming and 
being flexible to go later in the day and like all those good things. And uh, yeah, so a, a quick round of, if someone has a question and you can respond, I see a hand from Kathy here and Christy, and if you don't mind another few moments, Lauren, and then we'll transition to a circle of um, kind of gratitudes and intention recap. Thanks. Lauren. I'll go first, if I may. Um, Lauren, thank you. Um, does this dream path to manifesting your intentions, do you think the power of positive thinking works as well? Hmm. I mean, yeah, definitely. I think that, I think that I would say the, because the title of the talk was reading with the land that I almost would not say like manifesting my intentions, but like manifesting the dream of the land and the dream of the earth, you know? And so I don't know, that's like a slight shift in just like how I would engage with it. And then, and then yes, absolutely. I think that, um, thinking positive thoughts is like planting seeds of beauty in our mind and, um, I think that that's what we all need to be doing right now in a time where there's so many other kinds of seeds that are wanting to plant themselves in our mind. And I think that I have one of my teacher that I've talked about a couple of times, beautiful little dancing crow. She has a saying that's like, um, we have to dream the good dream for the future um, because if we don't, then who will? And so I think that positive thinking aligns with that really, really beautifully. Like we have to see beauty for the future and not just for me, but for all beings. Um, and so I think that, yeah, all we can do to stay positive um, in that regard is only gonna help us in these interesting times. <laughs> Thank you. The, the whole concept of, go, of, of slowing down uh, has been really helpful to me because I, I keep remembering, you know, that, that saying that goes around the per permaculture um, circles a lot about the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is today. And, and, and you know, it's like, okay, I've got to plant trees. I've got to get everything in the ground. But hold on, you know, uh, what wants to be here? What wants to grow? So thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. Oh, Lauren, yes, thank you so much. This is Kathy. Um, I was referring to coasttocoastam.com in the chat. And if I hadn't been listening to that show back in the uh, right after 911, I wouldn't have known that um, hundreds of other people around the country, like me, had a prescient dream about 911. Mm -hmm. um, I actually I, I was visiting my brother in Chicago two weeks before my birthday, which I'm a September 11 Virgo, and he's a Virgo. And we had a surprise party, but then I stayed at his house and uh, I woke up at six o'clock in the morning and his wife woke it up at the same time. We met in the hallway. We both said we had these really weird dreams. She couldn't remember hers, but I remembered um, a building collapsing in place and it was starting to go down the sewer. And I remembered uh, men in camouflage and policemen carrying buckets of body parts, five gallon white buckets of body parts. And that's exactly what I saw on TV, a 911. I get the chills right now because I realized that somehow time is a time slip and yeah. that thing was going to happen. And somehow I got to see it. And I had a couple other prescient dreams that kind of scared me in my life. But I, I tend not to tell people about the dreams if there's fearful things in them because I don't want to scare people. Yeah. Yes, I understand. I, yeah, I understand all that. And that is totally a thing that happens um, with the collective, you know, the, the collective dreams. I've heard that. I've experienced that. And I love what you said about the, it's the time slip. That's kind of where I'm at currently with my dreaming is I'm like, wow, this is like getting me plugged it like it's like me from my future sending me my dreams to my so-called past and there it gets all trippy. But I, I think it is, it really, they really do plug us into the mystery in that way. Um, so thanks for sharing that, Kathy. Yeah. And I want to say that if anybody, please do, if you have any like magical stories like that about dreams, especially as it relates to more like collective things or dreaming with the land, please send them to me. I just like to have those in my pocket for like talks like this, you know? So if you have any magical stories or experiences of dream with the land or anything, please do send them to me. And, um, 
yeah, thank you all for listening and for your attention. And also more so, thank you for all the work that you're doing in um, dreaming beauty for the earth and for the future. And um, I just send blessings to to all of your all of your farming and land tending and land conversating endeavors. And and thank you for doing all of it. So blessed be. Thank you. Thank you.